Hey there, it's Brittany and I'm back with a tutorial um, using some Jesse James beads today. Uh, we're going to use this really cute heart charm and this really cute little ghosty. He's um, got some enamel on him. And I am going to glue this little ghosty to our heart. So first I need to cut off his charm. I know, I know it hurts every time I do this. But um, we want to make him part of that other element so he won't need his little charm. Sorry, that went flying. If you have pets, put your fingers over the loop because now mine is investigating what that noi noise was. We're going to need some E6000 and I'm just going to kind of guesstimate where I want it. Actually I'm going to put it on the back of my ghosty in a line. close up your glue and then um, I'm going to plop it right on the heart in the air so it doesn't f uh, so the glue doesn't get on my work surface and do I want them tilted or do I want them straight up like that there we go like that and then I will flip it over and put it off to the side for at least an hour without touching it and then 24 hours to make sure it's cured Okay, my little ghosty is dry and super sturdy. That is not going anywhere. And we're gonna dress up this little pendant even more. Um, we're gonna be using some black and orange beads to make um, some really cute stuff today. So I have a couple black and orange mixes and some black check glass beads. Also gonna be using some 24 gauge gold wire, um, German style gold wire. And I am gonna take the end of my wire and anchor it to my heart bead frame here. And I am just gonna pull it around three times. So we're just gonna pull it on like that Stick it back through, pull it tight while holding the original piece. And it could be a little loose at first, so we're just going to make sure that we hold it in place while we get those first wraps established. So we have two wraps right now. And I'm going to do one more. And it's okay that they're moving around. The first bead that we load on will anchor that in place. All right, so I'm pulling as tightly as possible. And um, then I'm going to wrap this around at the end. I'll worry about finishing off that tail. Don't worry about it right now. Since I got a little kink in my wire, I'm going to take my nylon jaw pliers, these are from Beetlelon, and I'm just going to um, rub that up my wire to smooth out that kink a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I have to be able to get my bead down the wire. I'm going to take one of these 6mm black um, check glass faceted beads, these are fire polish beads, and I'm going to slide that on. Don't worry again that that's not perfect. We'll fix that. And then I'm going to hold that with my pointer on my left hand. Swing my wire back through. And position where I want it. I want it right there. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to do three more loops through with my wire. One, two, and three. So on the fourth go round, so we have three pieces, three piece, uh, three loops of wire. I'm going to move those together with my uh, fingernails. Tighten that a little bit. My next go around, I'm going to put on another bead. And I'm going to continue that until I have five beads on and they're wrapped up the left side of the pendant. And again, we have a little kink here because wrapping around the frame tends to 
be a little difficult with a, a longer piece of wire like I have. So then I'm going to hold that in place. Come back through and repeat that same process. And you can always, since the wire is so malleable, move that. If it's not exactly where you want it to be, move it around a little bit. That's exactly where I want it to be. And now I'm going to do the exact same thing up the side of the heart. Okay, so we have five pieces on and this guy's a little up top, so I'm gonna pull that a little bit tighter. And there we go. I'm loving that, super duper cute. We're gonna fix our little tail right there and cut off our top tail closer to the back. And then we'll kind of fold it under a little bit. And I'm gonna take my crimping pliers because if they're very we have a nice pointy part that'll get in there pointy end and that'll flatten that right against my bead frame I'm gonna do the exact same thing down here but I'm gonna pull it a little bit tighter than it was there we go and I'll snip right there and it's perfectly fine. So there is our pendant so far. So cute. I love that little ghosty. And then I love the uh, uh, how the black beads accentuate the heart. Next we're going to grab, I have some black and orange beads picked out. I have a, a nice flat rondelle, a gold spacer bead, and an orange um, rondelle. And then I have some 22 gauge wire. And I'm going to create um, a bail for our, um, our pendant. So first I'm just going to do a wire wrapped loop with my regular pliers. So we have our loop started. And then I'm going to open that up a little bit and then slip it onto my pendant. And then we're going to close that up. And we don't need a lot of wraps here. I'm just gonna do enough to get us closed up. So there we go, we just have two loops. I'm gonna swing it back to the back a little bit more and then snip. All right, so we have our little pendant hanging. And then I'm going to slip on my little black bead, my gold bead, and my orange bead. Isn't that cute? I love that. And then I usually would just do one wire wrap loop at the top, but I'm today gonna be using a little bit bigger chain. I have this heart gunmetal chain from Jesse James Beads. And isn't that fun that we're gonna have hearts down here and a heart on the chain? Um, and then I am going to make a larger bale here. So I have my bale making pliers from Beadalon and I am gonna go with the bigger bale option here. So I'm gonna go back towards the back swing my, um, or rearrange my pliers, come back around the larger mandrel, and just come back around, and we're gonna start our loop. So as you can see, our loop is quite large, and it'll be perfect for going over this chain, but I want two loops, so I'm gonna do it again. And I'm gonna kind of squish my wire between those two again and come around and down. So we have two, it just makes that wire that much sturdier for our uh, our bale. Then I'm gonna hold my loops, come down and around and do some wire wraps. And we can actually probably put this back on our bale making pliers to make sure those stay uniform 
while we're wire wrapping. Like that. You can do as many wraps as you want here. Okay, that looks great. And I'm gonna straighten that out and then we'll snip the wire. There we go. And we have a cute bale for our chain. So I'm just gonna cut this to my desired length. And I am gonna slip that through. You have a relatively quick necklace after the gluing stage. And I'll just put a jump ring on one end and a um, clasp on the other. We have a bootiful necklace. I'm sorry, I know it was a funny joke. Oh, I know it was a silly joke, but isn't that so cute? Oh my goodness! And the hearts. I I'm I'm a huge fan of hearts, so that just makes it better for me. All right, All right now that we have our bootiful necklace, um, I'm going to make a coordinating bracelet featuring this other charm from Josie James B. It's very spooky, but also very blingy. <laughs> So JJB had to bling it up um, for Halloween, and I really, really love this charm. Um, and we're just gonna make an orange and black coordinating bracelet. So I pulled out a bunch of beads from both of my mini mixes, and uh, we'll just kinda lay it out and then uh, string it. I also have a few jump rings to clasp onto and to hang my little charm from and um, some gold beads from both of the mixes. So I'm gonna be using a little bit more muted oranges in this one um, to make it look a little bit more sophisticated I, and not just a, a fun, bright Halloween bracelet, but one that could transition from day to night. <laughs> So we're just, I love these muted orange pearls. They're so wonderful. And we're just gonna keep going with black and orange. I have some 19 strand gold beetle on bead stringing wire. And I am just gonna string on my beads. All right, I need a little bit extra length on the bracelet, so I'm going to add my jump ring to my pendant, or my little charm. And I'm gonna string on another one of these orange beads, then my charm, and then two more of these orange beads. And that gives me some more length and a place to hang my charm. I have some beetle on crimp beads, size number one. And I'm gonna crimp right onto this jump ring, so I wanna make sure that it's closed really well. I'm actually gonna put a few jump rings on the end just to make sure it's um, adjustable. All right, that's closed up. I'm gonna put my crimp bead on my wire, then my jump ring, and then I'm gonna feed that back through my crimp bead, and through a couple of these beads. I 
and then I'm going to uh, make the loop smaller between the jump ring and my crimp bead. Take my crimping pliers and put that bead in the largest valley of my crimping pliers, making sure that these tails are not crossed. They're crossed at the moment. We're going to uncross them and squish. And then I'm going to turn that 90 degrees and squish again. And then it becomes more of a rounded bead and then a squished little ball. There we go. And then I will do the exact same thing on the other end around my clasp. I'm going to slide all my beads down and I'm putting these through. Um, it's not going to make the, the bracelet any stronger. It's just going to be more convenient if <laughs> I always do this. If I make a mistake, I don't have to restring the entire bracelet. It can just crack off the crimp bead and, re and uh, redo it. So I won't have to restring a whole bracelet if I make one small mistake. So I will cut this tail in a few moments after I crimp the rest of the bracelet. So I'm going to move all these beads down as tightly as possible without it being in a straight line. So I want it to be in about the, the shape of a wrist or the bend of a wrist like that. I'm going to put on a crimp bead, grab my clasp, come back through, come down through a few beads. and pull. We're going to pull that so it's tight. Because it's in a bended shape, it won't be too tight um, or stiff when I go to put it on. Then I'm just going to crimp like we did. Make sure that your glass bead isn't inside of your crimping pliers because it will shatter. And I've done that way more than once. <laughs> All right, so then we'll move it 90 degrees um, up one piece in the up one spot in the crimping pliers until we're at the front. All right, I'll go ahead and trim my wires. I'm just kind of pulling that to the side, getting my nippers in there as closely as possible without cu cutting the other wire. And I'll do the exact same thing here. Here we have a spectacular orange and black bracelet. That's super duper cute. I love it so much. And it goes so well with our beautiful necklace. Thank you for sticking around even with my terrible puns. <laughs> thank you to Dusty Jane's Beads for having me back. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.